If you have a P0420 or P0430 check engine light, here's how you can fix it with a $10 part. These are the items you'll need for this repair. You'll need these spark plug non-foulers. Part number is 42009, size is 18 millimeter, brand is Dorman, and I got these from AutoZone for $9.99. The next thing you'll need is this oxygen sensor socket set. This is so you can remove your O2 sensor from your car. Part number is 57110, and I got this as a rental from AutoZone for $30. And once you return it, you'll get the money back. You also need a half inch drill bit to drill out one of these non-foulers, which we'll show you in the next step. You also need a drill for your drill bit and a 22 millimeter wrench for your non-fouler. But if you don't have a 22 millimeter wrench, you can use a crescent wrench or some channel lock pliers will just do the trick as well. The first step of this repair is to take your non-foulers and you're going to drill out just one of them. You can toss out these gaskets because you won't need them. A quick overview of how this repair works is that we're going to take both of these non-foulers and screw them into each other, and then take your O2 sensor and screw it in onto this side. But the challenge is there's not enough clearance for the O2 sensor to sit all the way in, so we're going to have to take just one of these non-foulers and drill out the inside with the half-inch drill bit. Using a bench vise makes the drilling process so much easier, but if you don't have one, you can always use a pair of vise grip pliers and you'll still be able to get the job done. When you're drilling, there may be metal shavings that'll fly around, so make sure to use safety goggles. And I like to set up a trash bag right underneath to catch any metal shavings that'll fall on the ground. Now when you're drilling, it's important to stay as centered as much as you can. You don't want to get crooked because you may end up breaking into some of these threads. And it's important that these threads remain intact because we need them to screw into the other non-fouler. So I like to drill on this outer edge rather than the inside because it allows me to see where exactly I'm drilling and it helps me stay centered. All right, we just made it through, but before you touch it, give it some time to cool down so you don't burn yourself because this could get pretty warm after drilling. And one final touch I like to do is clean up some of these metal burrs on the outside and inside here with a drill bit that's a little bigger. But be careful when you use the drill bit on the inside here because you may end up ruining some of these threads. So now that we have one of our non-foulers drilled all the way out, we can take our O2 sensor and we now have enough clearance to screw it all the way in. And then we'll take our other non-fouler and screw it in onto this side. And this will be our setup that will go into your exhaust pipe or catalytic converter. But before tightening everything down and installing it onto the car, I like to take some anti-seize and put just a little bit on the threads of the O2 sensor and the threads of the non-foulers so it'll be easier to remove when you want to one day. Now you can put everything together and tighten it down. So the way this works is, picture this is your exhaust pipe or catalytic converter. And in the inside, there is the gases flowing through. And this is going to screw into your exhaust pipe or catalytic converter, which allows the O2 sensor to sit outside of the exhaust pipe, clearing all of the gases. Prior to installing this non-fouler plug, the O2 sensor was sitting inside of your exhaust pipe in direct flow of the gases. And if your catalytic converter was not doing its job, it was not detecting clean air and throwing off your check engine light. So this non-fouler acts as a spacer to allow the O2 sensor to sit outside of the direct flow of the gases so it could detect clean air. Now that you have everything tightened down and ready to go, this is where you want to install it. There'll be an O2 sensor on your exhaust manifold or right near it, and there'll be another O2 sensor either after your catalytic converter or it'll screw directly into it. You want to install this non-fouler onto this O2 sensor that's after your catalytic converter. The next step is to go underneath the car and locate the O2 sensor of where we're going to install the non-fouler fix. But before you go completely underneath the car, make sure to use the proper jack stands that are rated for your vehicle's weight. I like to put a jack stand, a backup jack stand, and for extra safety, I have another jack on the side I'm working on and a couple backups just to be extra safe. And before going completely underneath the car, I like to gather all of my tools that I'll need so I don't have to make multiple trips going back and forth to grab them. Next, we're gonna remove this O2 sensor and install this non-fouler fix in between. 
and if you don't have this O2 sensor completely removed from your vehicle like we did previously, you can perform this fix without completely removing it and leaving the other side plugged in and we'll show you how to do that here. You can simply use a large crescent wrench to remove the O2 sensor, but what I found is the easiest is to just rent the O2 socket sensor set from an auto parts store. And it comes with different options you can use because sometimes the space can be fairly limiting to get a tool in here. And in my case, I'll opt to use this socket style because there's enough space for it and it gives me easy leverage to pull it off. Now there's a cutout groove here in the socket to fish your O2 sensor wire through, so that way you can fully seat this socket onto the O2 sensor. Once I get the wire fished through, I'll slightly turn the socket in the direction of tightening it. So that way, once I go to loosen it, I'll have some relief to turn the other way without causing a lot of stress onto this cable. Then you'll get your 3 8 ratchet, put it into the socket, and I'll throw a cheater bar on here just to save myself some effort. There we go, we got that removed fairly easy. And you can remove this and remove the socket. It's kind of stuck on there, so I'm gonna go back on here and tighten it the other way to break it loose and then remove the socket and remove the O2 sensor the rest of the way by hand. If your O2 sensor was being a pain and not coming out you can always spray some PB blast on it and let it sit for a little bit to make it easier to remove. So the next step is to apply just a little bit of anti-seize to these threads here. And then we'll take our non-fouler that we drilled out earlier and screw it onto this side. Once it's fully seated, make sure to really tighten it down. And to tighten it down, I'll use the O2 sensor socket on this side. And a crescent wrench for this side. Now that we're all set up, we'll put a little bit of anti-seize onto these threads, and then we're good to install it back into the exhaust pipe. But before you install your O2 sensor back into your exhaust pipe, make sure to take your O2 sensor and spin it counterclockwise a couple times. So that way when you go and install it, your cables will naturally rotate back into its rested position. So that way it'll prevent your cables from being twisted up and will also reduce the amount of strain you have on your cables. So if you see there, I didn't spin it counterclockwise enough and I'm starting to see it. There's a lot of tension here and the cables are starting to wind up. And by the time I tighten it fully, there's gonna be a lot of tension and strain here. So I'll remove it and make sure to spin it more. What you can also do to make it easier is get seated about to where you would go when you would tighten it down and count the rotations when you're removing it so you know how many rotations you should go counterclockwise before installing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, so I'm at about six turns. So I'll let this unravel itself and I'll rotate it six times counterclockwise. So now we're in a more rested position without so much tension onto these cables. So now we can go ahead and tighten it down. All right, just like that, we fixed the check engine light, but I want to know this is only a temporary fix because you will not pass the visual part of the smog inspection with the O2 sensor extension. But this is a great temporary solution to get you by until you can directly address the problems. Because on some cars, a check engine light will also trigger other dashboard lights. So this is a great way to get you by in the meantime. So if this video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe for more videos like this.